It would be dull to silently watch a match on TV with the sound turned off. Whether it's Wimbledon or Wembley, muted action is tedious. Much better to hear the fans cheer and applaud and to join in. Because joy grows when you let it out. And it's the same with God. Contain your excitement about him and it will fade. But express it and your delight will expand. So let's hear the call of God in Psalm 145. As David says, I will exalt you, my God, the King. A psalm of praise of David, I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Now we might start to think, why bother? Why would you want to praise God every day? Well, two reasons. Firstly, we were designed to find ultimate pleasure in God. And secondly, it glorifies him. He's glad to be honoured and enjoyed. So it brings us gladness and it brings God gladness too. That's why through King David, God calls us to worship him. It's where we find our highest purpose and delight and nourishment. God invites you to enjoy him today. And the rest of the, the psalm shows us what about him we enjoy. Firstly, he's great. Then we see he's gracious, then faithful and righteous. Firstly, he's great. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. This is how children come to find their purpose and contentment. It's through the older generations explaining God's amazing works from one generation to another. Verse 5, they speak of the glorious splendour of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness, and joyfully sing of your righteousness. Just think what works God has done. He made this entire universe from nothing. 30 billion trillion stars, three trillion trees, three trillion fish, 400 billion birds, 7.6 billion people. Each one made up of 7,000 trillion trillion atoms and each one of those is a marvel. All of it sustained by his powerful word and directed by his pleasure and will, from the beginning of time to the very end. Creation, you see, declares that God is great and marvellous. But providence also declares it, because God provides all that we need. And God restrains all evil by his hand. And he directs all of history in every place for his greater honour. On top of all that, he displays his character in his mighty works of creation, providence and redemption. Now, David only knew of the exodus from Egypt and the conquest of the promised land, that God had saved his people from slavery, sword and even civil war. But we know that the Almighty also took on flesh in the Lord Jesus Christ, the climax of his great plan of salvation. He would swap places on us on the cross, give us his righteousness and take away all our guilt. Like a lightning conductor, he took the fiery wrath that we deserved. And by his resurrection, he frees us from Satan, sin and death. Please don't just nod in agreement, mull these things over, meditate on them, celebrate them and share them joyfully sing of his righteousness. It's good for you and it honours the God who is great. And here's another thing. He is also gracious. Verse 8. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. 
The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendour of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. And that is good news for every generation and for every man, woman and child everywhere because God governs with grace and compassion. If you want a fresh sight of that, just see in your mind's eye how God walked in Galilee. He forgave traitors and prostitutes. He welcomed children and foreigners. He healed the lame and blind beggars and fed thousands with plenty left over. He rules as a king of grace and he continues to extend his kindness through you and me. Well, who might you meet today who needs to hear this most? Who's going to hear about his mighty acts and his glorious kingdom? I recently heard that in measures of well-being among industrialised nations, UK teenagers come bottom in the whole world. And it's no surprise when we see so many struggling with mental health. So many teenagers fear rising sickness and crime and they're stressed out by their exams and many are neglected or disgusted by the adults they know. They are fed depressing lies by the social media that you can do anything, all with a spotless smile and a perfect body. And now apparently you can define your own identity, your gender, your sexuality as suits you each day. No wonder they haven't got a clue what they're living for, who they really are, or where they will find any peace and lasting joy. So let's introduce young people to the King of Kindness. Let's extend Christ's kingdom with the compassion that he has, because he's great and he's gracious. And thirdly, he's faithful. Verse 13 continues, The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. As Paul declares in Acts 14, 17, he has not left himself without testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in their seasons. He provides you with plenty of food and fills your hearts with joy. And that's because he's faithful to every living creature and full of love. And yet how often we look in the wrong place for what we need. It's sadly part of our culture and it means we're dissatisfied. In our childhood, we seek contentment in games or exam results. In our 20s, it's often in relationships or sex. In our 30s, it's often in children or career. In our 40s, it might be an ideal home or a holiday. In our 50s, it's in financial security and grandchildren. Beyond 60, it's in retirement and respectability as well as, well, all the above. At every age and stage, you know what? We're discontented. And then we die, the ultimate disappointment. Perhaps you too feel lacking and worried and discontented. Well, the Rolling Stones put it well, didn't they? I can't get no satisfaction, except in the Lord. He satisfies the desires of every living thing. And we have the privilege of enjoying not just his sustenance, but God himself. So in Psalm 63, David says, You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. So draw near to him today, the great and gracious and faithful God. Don't miss an opportunity to talk with him and to sing his praises because he's also 
righteous. That's the final reason from verse 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the, de the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. Now, sometimes we might think that God's righteousness is simply his justice, but it's more than that. It's a little summary of his perfections, his faithfulness, his goodness, his nearness, his rescuing love. It's all there in those verses we just read. So what do his people do? Well, verse 18, they call on him sincerely. Verse 19, they fear him. That is, they worship him and enjoy him. Verse 20, they love him and heed his every command. Why? Because although this righteous God will destroy the wicked, he draws near to save and provide for and watch over all who love him. Now, you probably know these things already. Well, don't sit there in silence. David says, I will exalt you, my God, the King. So open your lips. And that's why he concludes in verse 21. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. You see, our joy is always incomplete until it's verbally expressed. We've got to let it out in prayer, in praise and in evangelism. Please don't try to enjoy the Christian life on mute. Turn the sound up. Speak out your cries for help. Sing without shame and declare his works to others. That's how you're going to find joy and how others will find joy too. And it will bring gladness and glory to our great God. There's a couple of uh, songs um, you could listen to with links um, coming up on the screen now. Let's pray as we prepare to sing his praises. Great and gracious, faithful and righteous Lord, please open our minds to understand you, open our hearts to love you, and open our lips to praise you, so that we are satisfied and you are glorified. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, let's get to it. Let's open our lips and sing his praises. <laughs> 